<laughs> the Chrissy Swan Show. Oh, here we are on a Monday. Pa- pa- please excuse my nasally tone. I am getting over a cold, and I've realised a very hard truth about myself, and that is I don't know how to rest. Yeah, you don't. I don't know how to rest, but that's nothing a couple of codral day tablets can't fix. <laughs> Obviously. So I'm off my guts, <laughs> is the thing. I had a gorgeous weekend, though. I did do something for the first time, and that's what I'm asking you for Sega Day. I went to a market, a fresh food market, that's been around for I want to say hundreds of years, but at least decades. It's famous, and I'd never been. I was shook, because given the foodie you are and how well you know Melbourne, yes. when you uploaded this Instagram story, I was like, surely this is BS. Surely you've been I there. I have never been there before, and I will be going again. It was magical. I can imagine just chaotic Chrissy walking around the stalls, chatting to everybody, I making was, friends. I was. My <laughs> kids were so embarrassed. <laughs> Chrissy's Say G'day. Oh, we're laughing because we're talking about the things that you've never done before that you did on the weekend. And I cheekily said to Jack, did you did you have a, a whole day where you didn't imbibe any alcohol? <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle. Michaela, what did you do for the very first time? Hi, Chrissy. Hi, Jack. How are you? Good, darling. Good, Michaela. Good. I did rock climbing with my six-year-old daughter for the first time. And, oh, my God, it was the most scariest thing in the world. And I was trying to be positive for her, and I honestly could not. <laughs> How high up did you go? It's scary. Not all the way, because I because I am a little bit bigger person, and I was so worried about falling and the um, harness and everything not being able to hold me to bring me down. So I made sure that I stayed ho- tight on the rope the whole time. But you gave it a, a you one. gave it a red hot go. Good on you. It is so yeah. hard. <laughs> And they're not big. Like, my my problem with rock climbing is I've got huge feet. Yep. And it I, doesn't help when women have bigger chests as well. No, big boobs and big feet. It, it, they conspire yep. against me. Well done, Michaela. Priceline Pharmacy voucher for you, my darling. Okay. Jess, what did you do for the first time this weekend? Hi. Um, we went gold prospecting. Clearly, you have, like, a little gold detector and you go out into the bush. And, yeah, you try to find little gold nuggets Have in the Have you ground. been wanting to do this your whole life, pretty much? Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. This is a new obsession of my fiancé. So, oh, my yes. God. <laughs> what did you find, Jess? Did, did you or he find anything? Um, a couple of little bullet shells, some wire fence, um, and, and a what is, uh, red belly black snake. That was a little bit scary. <laughs> oh, my God. Did it have yeah, a we... gold ring on it? Is that what went off? How did yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, it went off. <laughs> wow. Is it so exciting when the sound happens and you're like, oh, my God, what is it? Yeah, and then you spend ages digging and you find, like, a piece of rusty metal. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you. Good on you. That's really impressive. Price on pharmacy voucher for you. Penny, what did you do for the first time? I took my son throwing axes and it was so much fun, Chrissy. Okay, talk me through what happens. We went to this fantastic place called Kiss My Axe. Yes. And Great, you eh? literally throw axes like a Viking at a target. And did you did they connect? Like were you good at it? Surprisingly, yes. Yes, yeah, Penny. So there's my a lot. Needs to watch the hell out. There's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of rage there. Yes, yes. Did you have a sore? Did you have a sore arm the next day, Penny? No, I'm amazed you don't. You don't oh. feel it at all the next day. You throw it from behind your back, like midway behind your back and over your head, which feels really bizarre oh. with two arms. Penny's I would got love the technique. To do that. Down. Yeah, good on you, Pen. Well done. You. Price my pharmacy voucher for you, my angel. And let's finish with Shaz. Shazza. <laughs> Hello. Hello. What did you do for the first time? I took my kids to build a bear. <gasps> my kids are desperate to do What's that? this. Uh, my my daughter's been begging me every time we walk past the shop. Jack's never heard of it. Explain time. it to him, Sharon. What is it, Sharon? So you go in, so you go into the store and there's all empty animals, if that makes sense, and you pick which one you want to design yeah. and dress. So you can choose you like a little so alligator with, or a teddy yeah. bear and then you oh. fill it and then you get little outfits. You can put a heartbeat in it. You can put smells in it. You get an outfit. I told them they could have one outfit each and one pair of shoes and my daughter came back with about eight outfits and three pairs of shoes. Mm. <laughs> and now you're behind in your mortgage repayments, aren't you, Sharon? <laughs> 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 Priceline voucher for you, Sharon. 
Chrissy Swan Show. Who doesn't love paying less for their favourite beauty brands? Love paying less for glowing skin or love paying less for feeling better? Find great prices on everything you love only at Priceline Pharmacy. Shop in store or online at priceline.com.au. The Chrissy Swan Show. On the weekend, I uh, caught up just briefly on Instagram with Liesl Jones, who, of course, is a you know world famous swimmer in uh, in Queensland, and well, she's famous all over the world, but she Worldwide. lives in Queensland. Yeah, and I did. I'm a celebrity with her. Was she on that? She was, but I think she might have been the first one out. So, you know, she was only on for like three days right, or a okay. week or something. But that's where I met her and she was just complaining on Instagram about how crap it is having to do the grocery shopping and it, can anybody give any hats. <laughs> so, of course, I was first to, to, to jump on the board on board there. But then we got chatting and, uh, and she said, oh, my God, I'm so glad to be talking to you. I... Uh, you came up in conversation the other day. She, I was going to tell you the other day I was talking to a receptionist uh, at a at a clinic about work and she said, oh, I only listen to the radio for Chrissy Swan and then I turn it off, right? And <laughs> I thought, that. who is this woman and how do I find her? Well, Liesl's given me the name of where this woman works. Okay. And I reckon let's just call and see if we can find her. Now, there's no guarantees that we're going to find the right woman. I don't even know her name. Liesl didn't get her name. Just so I can imagine and, like, set the scene, whereabouts in Queensland are we? It's uh, right in the middle of Brisbane. Okay, sweet. It's East Brisbane. Great. And um, she – look, I'm imagining a a full-time receptionist. She's probably there Monday to Friday. Yep. So, let's plug in the phone number. Hopefully, she's just finished her lunch break. Fingers crossed. I don't even know who I'm asking for. Good afternoon, the Headache and Pain Management Centre. You're speaking with Donna Lee. How can I help? Oh, hi, Donna Lee. My name's Chrissy Swan. How are you? Oh, good, thanks, Chrissy. How are you? I'm good. I think I might have found the right woman. I was talking to my friend, Liesl Jones, and she said there's somebody that works at that clinic that only listens to the radio for me and then switches it off. <laughs> I knew you were ringing about that, actually. I was, I mean, as soon as you Is it said, you? It's, it's me. I love it so much. I can't, are there other receptionists there and I've just gotten lucky by getting you? No. Oh, well, actually, there is another and she's sick today. So, uh-huh. no, you have just got really lucky. And got so, me. talk to me. Tell me. Where do you live and who do you <laughs> live with and what's your signature thing that you bring to a barbecue, Donna Lee? Oh, my God. Where do I live? Well, I live in Brisbane. Yes. And um, what suburb? I just want to place in, you. Like Lutwich. I'm in Runcorn. Runcorn. Know it well. Yes. <laughs> and what do you take if someone invites you? If you say, Donnelly, come over and, and bring something to my Barbie. What do you bring? Huge personality. I mean, yes, Duh. obviously. You've got to bring that. Yes. I'm a non-drinker, so I never br- – I'm, I'm usually the – the one that hand, that carries everyone's handbags and and yes. and um, sort of what it, documents the event, I suppose. Yes, me too. I picked but, you as a cob um, loaf kind yeah, of gal, Donna. Yeah, I feel like there's a I special am, dip. I, I'm yeah. a salad girl too. I'm a okay. huge salad girl with lots and lots of nuts and and things in there and fruit. I put oh. fruit in there. I know people go, "What the hell is that about?" But oh it's god, I, I think it is too. I think a raisin is really underrated in a in a salad. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. And cranberries too. Absolutely. But no goji berries, Donnelly. <laughs> None. No, no. Donnelly, if you listen yes. to our show so often, I'd love to get to like, hear your feedback on the show. Is there anything you like? Is there anything we should stop doing? Yeah. I love your show full stop. There's not anything about the show that I would change. I love the fact that it's just you and Jack on there and... and um, well, I want to yeah, know, I've got one more question for you before we go. I mean, obviously, will you marry me? That's one, <laughs> one question. But the, the other one is, do you drink coffee? I do. Well, Donna Lee, I'm thrilled to tell you I'm going to send you a Sunbeam Barista Max <gasps> Espresso machine. How good. And oh, it is so good. I've got one at home and it's just like what you'd get, you know, at Coffee Club or something. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was- that's amazing. Do you know, every day I listen to you and all the people that ring in and I think, I wish I wasn't driving and I could actually ring in and have a little chat with you. Well, And, and I and I never can because I'm always driving and I'm never hands-free. Well, that's what we've done today, except I called you. 
I know. It's amazing. (laughs) All right, you have a beautiful day. You've absolutely made my whole year. Oh, thank you so much. You've made mine too. And you know what? I'm so going to look after Lisa next time she comes in. (laughs) Please do. Please do. And I'm going to hurt myself on purpose so that I can come in and get fixed by you. Absolutely. At reception. (laughs) reception. We love you, Donna Lee. Thank you. Thank you both. You're the best. The Chrissy Swan Show. Who am I? A queen in the kitchen? Could be. Now find your queen vanilla in the baking aisle to discover how a little queen does wonders in your bakes. What's my name? Who is it? Chrissy Swans. Who am I? Hello, Jody. Welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? So good. I hope you get a big bag of cash, Jodes. That's my wish for you on this day. Oh, I need it. Yeah. I've got clues and they want too much. Yes, always, <laughs> always. All right, let's get cracking. I've got five clues here about a particular celebrity and $500 cash with your name on it. Fingers crossed, Jody. let's go. Clue number one, I recently stated that I would rather from now on be known by my birth name, not my stage name. Um. Mm, Sorry, Joe. It's clue two for $400 cash. In my most recent acting job, my character, Tedros, really creeped viewers out. I liked this character. I thought he did it well. You, you liked the performance. You the didn't performance. like the character. Sorry, sorry. No, I thought the he executed was it well. Icky. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you for clearing that up. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Jones. Clue three for $300 cash. I have done several music collaborations with Ariana Grande. Um, okay. <laughs> Someone's just <laughs> grunting at you and they're going, I don't know. Don't clue, know mate. Clue, clue number four for 200 bucks cash. I am touring Australia in November and December this year. I'm excited to see this. I know person. I need to get tickets to yeah. see him. No, Damn no. All right. all right, for one hundred bucks, this is my song. <laughs> Who sings it, Jody? Turn it up for your helper. <laughs> when I'm with you, did Who? you just say the weekend? Yes. You are correct, Jody. Hundred bucks cash for your Jodes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well done, Jodie. Good one. Chrissy's clickbait. Yes, what has grabbed my attention? The name Doria Ragland. Now, I haven't seen this name since Meghan Markle and Prince Harry got together, and frankly, I missed it. <laughs> I've been wondering. I've been wondering what she's been up to. What has she been up to? Because she was like the only family member invited to that wedding. Yeah. The only one. I, f- I really like her. She's really likeable. She seems like a really nice lady. Yeah. Anyway, she has been snapped at a fundraiser with Chris Jenner and Kim Kardashian. And they look very cosy. Kim's clinging onto her like a souvenir <laughs> koala that you get at Circular Quay in Sydney. Kim looks genuinely happy to be there. She really does. Yeah, what, a, what an odd trio. I wonder what they discuss. Like what do they discuss? What I mean, they're buying, what they're buying at Erewhon, or what their assistants are buying them at Erewhon. I, yeah, I wonder. Um, I wonder if Megan's name came up. She, of course, wasn't there. And I just love. Um, I just love this line. Uh, Ragland, the grandmother of Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet. I mean, it's just such a weird situation, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Just this very ordinary yoga teacher. Has a prince and princess's grandchildren. And she does just seem so chill. It's also funny, I think the reason it seems so weird seeing them all in a photo together is it's like it's two different type of royalties coming together. Yeah. Like, really, the Kardashians are sort of the royal reality family of America. Absolutely, they are. And then there's actual royalties. And all you can see behind are other charity goers with their phones up taking photographs. Of the three of them. Of the three of them. I hey, it's awesome. I love Kim, but I don't know about Kim with a fringe. She is sporting new bangs. There's not much she can't rock, but I don't know if a fringe is for her. No, it looks a bit greasy. It does. You know what I mean? I do. And that's, that's what happens with fringes sometimes. They get 
greasy out of nowhere. And of course hers wouldn't be greasy. Maybe that's a look. Here is another headline which grabbed my attention. You know I'm obsessed with apples. Yeah. I've already eaten three in your company today. (laughs) Does an apple a day really keep the doctor away? Have you ever wondered? Have you ever wondered if it does? I haven't, but I have now. Like where that saying comes from, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Everybody knows it. I've always wondered, how does it? Well, I'm here to tell you how. Oh, I love this. So normally you would think that, well, I considered, oh... Well, obviously, they're full of vitamins and minerals and stuff, and that's how it works. That is not true. Apples are not high in vitamin A, nor are they beneficial for vision. They're not a great source of vitamin C, all of that stuff. But they do have bioactive substances. So there's not really too much going on in terms of um, vitamins, but they've got bioactive substances, which are also very important. What do they do? They well, they they all do different things, right. but apples are high in dietary fibre, so they keep you pooping regularly. Gotcha. The, and also pectin, another fibre, and um, or, or eating all of that stuff reduces the risk of diabetes and heart disease. They also have anthocyanin, whatever, but basically don't eat them for the vitamins and minerals. Get them from somewhere else. Right. But they're still full of good stuff. Hey, have you gotten over the whole getting a tattoo of an apple? No, I haven't. Oh. I haven't yet. But you and, haven't got the tattoo. And I'm going to Bali, so you never know. Oh, I, you, you've got to go full bogan and get one. I can see it happening. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> is the Chrissy Swan Show. I do have a bit of a cold and I've realised that resting is this actual skill Mm. and I don't have it. I don't possess it. I really tried this weekend and I sat on the couch and I had a blanket and I turned on Netflix and then I went... Oh, well, while I'm doing this, I'll just put a few no. lines of washing on. I know, it's the while I'm. And then, yeah. oh, look, while I'm doing that, I'll fold the washing. And then the 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 dishwasher went beep, beep. And I went, I'll just unpack that. No, I don't funny. know how to rest. You've got to really train yourself and, like, make an effort. Even, like, I've trained myself when I rest to put my phone in another room and just focus on the Netflix show. And it really helps switch off. You've got to do, like, train your hands to just clasp together and not go and do any tasks. I need to lock myself in a cell. I also walked 12 and a half kilometres on each day because the Fred Hollow's uh, big run is, the time is wasting. Uh, It finishes on Thursday and I've got 36 kilometres to go. Easy, you'll do that. I have faith in you. In four days? Yep, you'll be able to do it. When I'm under the weather? Yep. We'll see. Get behind me, Google Chrissy Swan at Fred's big run and give me anything you've got. Quizzy. Only a few questions separate you, Sarah. Sarah, and Renee from a bum bag. Ooh. <laughs> who, who, who was that? Who did the ooh? Sarah. Sarah. Hi, Renee. Hi, Chrissy. How are you? What are you going to put in your bum bag if you win it? <laughs> Oh, I don't know what I'd put in there. Maybe some 80s retro gear. Yes. Good answer. Like maybe a Walkman. Yes. Yes, Renee. Yes, Renee. All right. This is how it works, my darlings. Your names are your buzzers. Test your buzzer, Sarah. Sarah. Renee. Renee. Yes. Oof, you're quick off the buzzer, Renee. Um, it's the best of five, meaning the first person to get three answers correct wins of the game and will walk away with the money can't buy. Chrissy Swan Show, bum bag. Question number one. Flights were grounded at Melbourne Airport this morning. Sarah. What? Yes, Renee. Sarah? Because of fog? Correct. Yeah. The fog. I was out walking this morning and it was so foggy. Reminded me of the first guy I ever did radio with, a guy called Ronnie Stanton. Yeah. And when it was foggy in Queensland on the Sunshine Coast, he would say, it's a fog-tastic day out there. <laughs> oh, I hate myself for fog- hearing that. <laughs> Have you ever used fog-tastic in a sentence, Renee? No, I haven't. Well, <laughs> there you go. Here's your chance. <laughs> Question number two. Eight years ago today, this song was released. Wrong bit, Jack. Doesn't matter. People will know. Renee. Uh, Yes, Renee. What do you mean? Justin Bieber. Correct, my girl. Still a tune. Oh, is everyone okay there? 
What is that sound? They're squealing. My daughter's squealing. <laughs> oh, my God. I love that. One point to Renee, one to Sarah. Question number three. Eternity, B, one, and free are all fragrances from which brand? Sarah? Renee? Yes, Sarah? Chanel? No. Uh, Good guess. Does Renee have a crack? Yeah, have a crack. Estee Lauder? No. Uh, Calvin Klein. uh, Question number four. Score check, Jack. One point each. Question number four. Which smiley pop star released a song called Used to Be Young just on Friday? Renee. Yes, Renee. Miley Cyrus. Correct. Little squeal there. Is there another squeal? (laughs) Two points to Renee, one to Sarah. Renee, this next one is for the win. In which country, this is a tricky one, in which country was Russell Crowe born? Renee. Yes, Renee. New Zealand. Yes! She's bloody done it. You've bloody done it. Yes. Now, is your your daughter there? Where's your daughter? Let me talk to her. Hi. Hi. What's your name? My name is Sydney. Sydney, what a great name. So you, your mum's won the bum bag, but I'm going to throw in a Priceline voucher for you as well because there's so much amazing stuff there and you need to go and Thank you fill so up much. your basket. Good on you, mate. Thank you. Sydney is a fantastic name. It is a great name. I just name. want to put that on the record. Well done, oh, Renee. Sydney Nolan, like the artist. So Beautiful. The Chrissy Swan Show. The Chrissy Swan Show. So excited to welcome for his debut on oh, this show, wow. legend of television and radio, Tony Martin. Thanks. I can't believe you fit an entire studio audience into this tiny booth. It's <laughs> I amazing. mean, you know, if you dream it, you can do it. <laughs> great. Um, it's great to see you. Thank you. Likewise. And I loved seeing you on Thank God You're Here as, yes. as the judge. That's right. I was... Um, well, the thing is, uh, the night I did it, this mm. is probably giving away too much behind the scenes, sure. but there was a lot of foul language from what? the contestants. What's there? And a lot of that had to be expunged from uh, the broadcast. Oh. And so a lot of my comments subsequently had to be... <laughs> and there was a brilliant piece of editing. I'm going, wow, they! <laughs> I can't believe they got rid of that. When I heard <laughs> that your name was attached to that episode, I thought, oh, my God, he's going through the door. How exciting. It was also exciting that you were a judge, but I would have liked to have seen you being a player. Well, I was on the old thing yeah. here a few times. Yeah. And the one people always mention to me mm. is where I was in a SWAT team. Yeah. And I had to go through the door. Yeah. And as you know, it's very well thought out. Like the scenes are rehearsed with, yeah. you know, stand-ins and they sort of plan for any possible option. But that one, I think, is the only time in the history of the show that literally everything went wrong. <laughs> like I went out there and Ed Cavalli and the other uh, supporting actors were just looking at each other like they didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I'm going, surely you people know what's meant to happen. And what happened was I got off stage and round the back of the set, there was like all these people waiting to go on. There was like a full police, uh, you know, orchestra. Yeah. There was a guy completely made up as the then Prime Minister, John Howard. So what happened? I think there was a horse waiting to go (laughs) on. And apparently what had happened is something, none of those things could happen until something else had happened to trigger them. Right. Because the first thing didn't happen, none of the subsequent things could happen. Nothing happened. And you still, what, that's... um uh, really making a silk purse out of a sow's ear, Tony Martin. It was Martin. An absolute shambles, but it played on airplanes for years. Yeah. And to this day, I get people go, oh, I love that one where you were in the SWAT team. If you could open the door, what <laughs> scene would you like to walk in on? I, What's your dream scene? I would love to, uh, if they could do a perfect recreation of a video easy. <laughs> Oh, wouldn't that be heaven? I was working in a video shop. That would be... Do you know what would be great? If you walk through the door and it's the sliding heart on perfect match. Oh, wow. And then all of a sudden you're going to the Witch Sundays with a guy called Craig. (laughs) That would be wonderful. Someone told me they were uh, at a wedding recently where Greg Evans, the former host of Perfect Match, was conducting the ceremony. He is a celebrant. Right. Busy. I mean, busier than Mike Larkin, if you can believe that. I was disappointed to hear that uh, he didn't have Dexter the robot with him. Very sad. Taking part. I think he does actually travel with Dexter. (laughs) 
I think he does. Now, you are on Have You Been Paying Attention yes, Tonight? I am. Um, on 10, 8.30, Sam Pang makes his triumphant mm, return. He does. Did you see the Daily Mail articles asking why he had disappeared? <laughs> I was just happy uh, to see that it wasn't you for once. Uh, <laughs> <to> see, <laughs> in the Daily Mail, there was a conspiracy theory that he had been uh, exiled. Yeah. Is that the word? Yeah. Word? yeah. Mm. Taken off yeah. television. So Pang goes underground. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and sort of unable to appear on any of his shows because of a joke he made about about Carl Stefanova? Maybe it was something or like Kochi, that. Kochi, perhaps. And the truth was, of course... It was on holidays. It was on holidays. <laughs> it was As on if holidays. a joke about Carl Stefanova could get you banned oh, from television. no, no. But that is the... You know the Daily Mail. I remember, Chrissy, when you were too posh to push, mm. apparently, because yes. someone was helping you with your shopping. With my shopping. And the truth is I am too you are. posh to push. <laughs> I've been too posh to push my three children out. And uh, on that occasion, I was too posh to push my grocery trolley. And Tony, tonight as well... Well, Kitty Flanagan's on with you. Yeah, Has her uh, Netflix sort of fame got to her head yet or not? Because Fisk has got yes. killing it on Netflix. Yeah. It's great. I do. Know, I don't want to give away too much about the show, but you never know what's been cut out. Yeah. But I do know that Sam Pang was thinking, well, surely I'm – because he was in. Uh, Fisk, Fisk it was, yes. He was thinking, surely he's getting a cut of that sweet <laughs> Netflix coin. Of course, of course. <laughs> Watch Have You Been Paying Attention, 8.30 tonight on Channel 10. Well, you were a very early adopter with uh, Twitter, weren't you? You've yes. been on since day one almost. And I don't have a phone, so I'm doing it all from a steam-driven desktop <laughs> computer. That Old is school. so impressive because I... Got, I got rid of Twitter a long time ago yeah, because right. I find it awfully ugly. Uh, it I is find quite it ugly. ugly. Yeah. yeah, but you can block people. That's I know, thing. but I just think anyone that's still there shows yeah. such robust fortitude. And I, I dips me lid to you, Tony. Well, Martin. it's just a good format for a stupid joke. Mm. It's kind of like a writing pad for comedy ideas. Well, that's how I see. Let's what have see. you found? Let's see. We found some of your Uh-oh. tweets. Are Any- they still called tweets, or are they yeah. called X's? Oh. People are still calling it Twitter. Older people like myself are, certainly. This one from August 23rd. What really goes on at hashtag masked singer tapings? Oh. From, from Sizzletown. Talk to me because we've got a we've got a release date for Masked Singer. The Madness is back on the 11th of September. Well, this came about because when I was uh, shooting my Thank God You're Here, mm. Ben Lomas, do you mm. know the comedian Ben Lomas? Do I know him? Oh, he's, he's my soulmate. He's fantastic and he does a lot of really funny material about shows that he's done the war warm up for. Yeah. And I so, want him to write a book. He's got so much gold. But mm. I didn't realise this that when you go to the Mars Singer taping mm. just before they're about to say who it is, yes. everyone has to go. Correct. Because otherwise it'll just get onto Twitter. That's right. And so nobody gets the payoff in the studio audience. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so grim. I feel so guilty every time. So on my podcast, Sizzletown, which is a fake talkback radio show, mm. I had someone call in and claim that they snuck back to see who it was. Right. And they tell a long, elaborate story about how it was Daryl Summers and it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> oh, my And he was God. dressed as Tattoo from the Fantasy Island <laughs> and he, and he tr- ran onto a drum kit and started doing a drum solo oh. and had to be dragged away and they this found... This is actually something that could happen. <laughs> and they found uh, Carbo from Pack to the Rafters bound and gagged in his <laughs> dressing room. So I made this up. It's just a nonsense story and it's amazing how many people have now heard... I heard this was true, Daryl. By the way, Sizzletown <laughs> is a podcast that you do not want to miss. I was just talking about it this morning. I see. It's, with my friend. It's very strange. And I said, I don't think there's a single podcast in the known universe that has enough, has the same amount of work that goes into it. It's, it's extraordinary. Huge, it's, we, it's about three weeks' work to make a 40 minute episode. And Far you can out. hear it. It's extraordinary. All right, next tweet. Yes. Melbourne man charged with lighting fires had ducklings in his underwear, police allege. Yes. And what did I say? You said, turns out it's not a figure of speech. He literally did. (laughs) That's right. It was a story about a man smuggling ducks in his underpants. I can't remember to what end. I love that. (laughs) And what about this one? Australian who tried to post 23 packages of capital P, capital O, capital O (laughs) to Leonardo DiCaprio and Jared Leto marked as Valentine confectionery learns his fate in court. You said, mate, I reckon Pooh should be in (laughs) cap. I love to take on the role of the Daily Mail editor. 
because it's always fascinating to me which words in the sentence they decide to capitalise. And obviously in that one, it was poo. In this one, our mutual friend, uh, Sam Pang. Oh, yes. Conspiracy theory spread after Sam Pang goes missing after Logies. Yeah. You tweeted, can tell you for a fact that this is complete BS. That's right. The quote from Mick Molly is correct. <laughs> right. They had an inside track of what was going on according to Mick Molly. Mick Molly. <laughs> I mean, that's because it's written yeah. by a 16-year-old intern who's never heard of Mick Malloy. No, and is AI now doing the proofreading? I think so. I think so. I think so. It's been outsourced. Um, thank you so much for coming Thanks in, Tony. Thanks for having me, Catch team. Tony and his unique genius tonight on Have You Been Paying Attention. I'm sad that you're not on next week because I'm hosting oh, next week. Oh, are you? You're yeah. very good at that. Thank you very much. it's a very specific skill to keep that show on the road. The rails. brief to me whenever I turn up is... Are you Think, do you think you're going to have fun? You're going to have as much fun as last time? I said, yes, I love it. And they said, there you go, no further instructions. Oh, it's a lot of fun. And it's always safe to know that it's not going to air live yes. because a lot of defamatory things are said. <laughs> many, many, all the yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Tone. Cheers. Chrissy's clickbait. I love a pair of queens supporting each other. And I love Adele. And I love Miley Cyrus. Is Adele on your queens list? Unconfirmed. Really? I know. Surely she's a. It's she's surprising. A good it's surprising. I don't think so. I know. I want to. I want to talk about this on another day. Well, it depends on how many I'm allowed to have on my list. If I can have ten, yes, she's on the list. All right. But I feel like five is is yeah. the right number. I think it's. I like to keep it small. Yeah. So I, I appreciate that, and I okay. appreciate your honesty, but I'm surprised. Well, we've got, I'm, this is the sort of thing that we're going to talk about for the next ten years and never actually arrive at the at the final list. Totally. But Adele is a queen. There is no doubt about it, and she's always so kind about other performers. Yeah. And you feel like, yes, she is a, a luminary in the industry, but she's also just a fan and she's openly a fan of Beyonce. Loses her mind every time they're in the same awards ceremony together. And it turns out she's also a fan of Miley Cyrus, who released a new song on Friday. It's called Used To Be Young. It's so gorgeous. Oh, gosh. And as you know, Adele's got a residency in Vegas and uh, she treated her fans to this little snippet. I am obsessed with Miley Cyrus's new song. Has anyone heard of it? I've always been a big Miley Cyrus fan and I've got such a soft spot for nostalgia and that song woo, might make me tear up now. I absolutely love it. I think it's amazing. I think she's... She's such a legend. She's such a legend. I would like to hear Adele sing it as well. Oh, true. Not throwing any shade on Miley, who does an amazing job, but I would love Adele's interpretation of it. Miley heard that Adele had mentioned her in Vegas, heard that little snippet, and she tweeted, I thought of you often while writing this song. I always hoped that you would love it. This means the world to me. I love you. Mission accomplished. How nice is that? Two queens, just being queens. Beautiful interaction. So beautiful. Now, Florence Welsh who is the lead singer of Florence and the Machine. There is not one bad song that has come out of that woman. Not one. She is incredible. And, like, you can cry to her, but then also Saturday night at the club, you can dance to her. I mean, come on. Oh, I'm getting... Okay, so I've still got a fair amount of kilometres to do for Fred's big run. I'm going to listen to Florence Welsh. Completely. Yes. Exclusively until I get to that 300 kilometres. Well, she has revealed she's had life-saving surgery. She's taken to social media. She cancelled a gig. She says she's not yet strong enough to talk about it. It's horrible. And it's nothing to do with her feet. Apparently, there must be some feet issues. My God, now I sound like Mystic Christian. She's always jumping around on stage. But she has nothing to do with her feet, but it's life-changing. She can't talk about it. But how's this? She'll be back at work September 1st. Okay, so she's okay. That's bloody Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Can't be that hard. You'll have done 300 kilometres by then. Oh, walking. you're a sweet kid. <laughs> uh, we are out of here. We'll see you tomorrow for uh, Tuesday's show. Have a gorgeous night. Look, I don't know who needs to hear this, but sausages and bread are a perfectly fine dinner. Yeah. Okay? All right. Bye. See you tomorrow. Now check this out. The Chrissy Swan Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.